Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. In this video, we're going to review this telescope, the Bausch & Lomb Criterion 4000. This is a four inch Smith Cassegrain that was built for not many years back in the 1980s. And you don't see too many of them around used. And well, to put it simply, it has a pretty bad reputation. Now, recently I made a review of an old Celestron C90, which to be honest, doesn't have a great reputation on the forums either. But when I tried it out, I found that really that wasn't particularly well deserved, certainly for the example that I've got. So we'll do this one a favor and give it a good try. We're gonna see what you get in the box if you pick one of these up. We're gonna have a look at its mechanical quality and then most importantly, we're gonna look through it and see whether optically it is as poor or mediocre as a lot of the reviews would suggest. So my uh, 4000 came in a black plastic case, which is sort of typical of the era. Uh, pretty solid, uh, certainly looked after the scope over the years. So if we start with the main scope itself, take it out of the box and let's have a look inside the tube. So. Um, as I mentioned, this is it's a basically it's a four inch F12 Smith Cassegrain design. In this case, the mirrors look pretty good condition actually, nice and bright. Not any obvious sign of coating on the corrector at all. It looks completely plain. Um, fairly traditional collimation screws with some Allen keys on the back of the secondary. It's quite heavy. It weighs about four and a half kilos. And what I would say straight away is you get the impression it's, it's pretty well built. It's got two forks. So it sort of sits perhaps in between the idea of the old Celestron C90 and the C5, both of which I've reviewed on my channel. It has the classic vintage and totally useless finder. This is, I think is a, a four times magnification, has a reticule, uh, 15 millimeter, objective well i think pretty well useless you can find some bright stars with it and uh, do some basic pointing but not much else it has um, controls for slow motion on the declination and also movement in right ascension here at the bottom so it's, it's a pretty standard fork mount really just in miniature and yeah, I quite like it. It's got a very unusual sort of vinyl coating on the outside of the tube. Uh, a lot of talk about whether these are aluminium tubes or resin tubes, um, they're not cardboard I'd say. And to be honest, I'm not too bothered. It seems quite solid. So if it's survived for, for this long, 40 odd years, then it's probably gonna survive a few more. So yeah, setting circles on both sides, coming around the back, got a clamp here. As you'd expect, it comes with, um, well, it actually, mine comes with several visual backs. This is, I guess, a standard visual back in as much as it's got a one and a half quarter um, accessories. So it will take modern eyepieces, but this thread is not an SCT thread. It was a special uh, Bausch & Lohm thread, not the same as Celestron and Mead. Uh, SCT threads. Mine came with this uh, straight through visual back so I can put a camera straight into the back of there. It also came with one of these which is an integrated visual back and prism diagonal. So I think that's quite a nice idea. Certainly nice to have both inside the case. Um, again it's all metal, very solid. Mirror needs a bit of a clean, or the, 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 the prism rather needs a bit of a clean, but other than that, it's good to go. What else have we got first? It has a little focuser knob here. Straight away, you notice that this focuser knob is very, very lightweight, very easy to move, and very, very smooth. So yeah, it gives a good impression actually, mechanically. It doesn't rattle, nice and smooth. It's, a few ticks so far. Uh, what else to note, uh, you can take the optical tube 
off the fork pretty easily. It's just got four recessed Allen keys and then the tube will slide out of the mount. So that's pretty handy because if we look underneath the tube, it has a block that you that has a tripod thread on it. So it's, it's very easy given that the tube itself, the optical tube is very light. So I'd say it is perfect for use if you've defaulted it um, as, a, as a spotting scope. Okay, what's left? Well, mine is an AC model. It comes with a power cord, but not a lot of use to me here in the UK. And to be honest, uh, I'm not likely to, to bother hooking up to an inverter to, uh, to run the motor in this case. But yeah, it, here it is, you can see there, a few details some serial number information, but not really a lot else. There's precious little information online other than people saying that they're generally not very good. But um, hey ho, I haven't found a registry yet of the serial numbers, so I can't give an exact date, but let's just say somewhere in the early 80s. What else was in the box? Well, mine came with two eyepieces. Now these are called uh, aspherical eyepieces, and I believe they're basically like four element plossal designs, one 30 millimeter and one an 18 millimeter. And uh, bearing in mind, it's got a 1200 millimeter uh, focal length. Then you can see that this one's gonna give us about 40 times. Everything again, very solid, good condition. Certainly not starter eyepieces in the sense that you get if you buy a sort of Sinter uh, scope these days. So fairly promising there. We'd love to see what they're actually like to use. Other mystery items in the box. Well, this one comes with, it looks like a, a, an extender basically to put an SLR on the back. I think this is a thread for a T-ring. And it comes with this, again, mystery item, Criterion Focal Reducer, two times. So I think somehow we could probably screw this together and hook it on the back with the DSLR. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, interesting to see this reducer inside the box. Not sure if that's standard or not. Uh, finally, for now, if we look at the base, you see there's quite a few, there's, there's a hole on the bottom of the base here for a, a tripod, to hook on a tripod, um, as well as the one on the mounting block underneath the optical tubes. So that's quite good. And also there are some holes around the base, which are for use with the legs. So inside the case, mine came with three legs, which allow you basically to use, to, to configure it equatorially on a tabletop. And one of the legs is of adjustable length. So you can adjust to uh, suit your latitude uh, like that. So this is the kind of thing you saw on the 2045s and a couple other scopes, but it's quite a neat feature if you wanna to use the scope, certainly if you've got uh, some power and you've got a garden table maybe, or a suitable tripod, then you can set it up and run it uh, equatorially. What else? Not much else to see in the box. Well, again, mine, another, well, a bit spoilt for um, visual backs, actually. Finally, there's another one here, which has come with um, a, an old T-ring. I don't think it's gonna fit my camera, but, so I've basically got three uh, screw-on attachments to go on the back of the scope, all inside the case, which really no complaints about that whatsoever. So, yeah. Very solid. So far, it gives you the impression that, well, maybe this thing is a little bit better than um, that its reputation suggests. But as with all scopes, you've got to look through it before you decide if it's something you need to look at on a, on a shelf, because you like the look of it, or whether you're gonna actually use it outside under the stars. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time now, try and come back with some idea of optical quality, and yeah, we'll draw a conclusion after that. Okay, so I often try out scopes during the daytime first, just to get an idea of um, 
how they handle, get used to where all the controls are. So I've bought the, uh, the 4000 somewhere nice and scenic. We're going to have a look at some birds here on a river down in Cornwall and just see how it, um, how it manages focus wise, uh, stability wise, sitting on its um, standard fork mount. So I took a few images of the moon uh, with a DSLR and then with an Astrocam. And I think to talk over these, it gives a good summary of the performance of the Bausch & Long 4000 at night. At low power, you can get some really nice views. It's good fun scanning through the Milky Way with the standard 30 millimeter eyepiece. So down at low power, maybe 40 times, 50 times, it's great and good fun scope. As you try to put the magnification up, go above a hundred times, you really start to lose uh, clarity. It's certainly not as sharp as uh, the C5 or really even the C90, but a nice low power scope that really loses definition um, if you put the power up. I think this image flatters it a bit if you, if you stack the frames of the moon. So Jupiter's high in the sky around 45 degrees above the horizon, uh, not long after opposition. And this is the planet without any Barlow. So I've got an ASI 224 uh, at the back of the Bausch and Lom and I'm using fire capture. You can't really see a huge amount on the disc. Uh, there's periods of better seeing, a little bit of light cloud. You can really just pick out the main equatorial bands. And there is one of the Galilean moons, uh, which is visible. It's Io and it's to the top right of the planet. So we'll see what we can do with a bit of uh, post-processing. And this is what I got, put it through AutoStacker and Registax. Now yeah it's not brilliant, you can see IO um, and you can see a reasonable amount of detail. The, the focus certainly wasn't perfect, you can see a kind of bit of double imaging in this in this shot but it compares reasonably well to some of the shots I've taken with my old Celestron C90. So a reasonable result, I'd say. Not the, not the best, not the worst. Okay, so Bausch & Lomb 4000 conclusions. Well, I really like this scope. It's, it's surprised me. Mechanically, really nicely put together. Very smooth focus, almost zero image shift. As for the images themselves, well, I'd say this is good. It's not excellent. It is certainly not top end, but it's not a dud. It could really do with some some modern coatings on the corrector and I think it would improve the contrast of the images but basically it, it, it's pretty good. As a spotting scope yeah really good fun 1200 millimeters uh, you can get decent uh, images using the the 0.5 reducer as well so take it down to 600 millimeters. You have to be a little bit careful with the focus it's very 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 sensitive very smooth but the image doesn't move around um, when, you're, when you're adjusting it, which is really nice. Nighttime, yeah, I've got an okay picture of Jupiter. Uh, not the best, but yeah, certainly not what I expected given this scope's reputation. So for me, definitely not a hidden gem, um, but certainly not 
uh, a very, very poor scope, which, which really is what you'd believe if you read a lot of the reviews. I, I really like it. Uh, it wants to be used and comes with good eyepieces. Standard kit is very good. And I'd say if you can pick one of these up for not very much, then you're taking a bit of a chance, but maybe you're gonna get a decent performer like this that, um, that you'll enjoy. So thanks for watching, hope it's been useful. Please uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already to look out for more videos from Genoms Astro.